An update values query allows us to make changes of values within a table, like the table I have here, the book project table, with specified criteria. So for example, let's say I want to be able to update or increase the book price on some of the books by 5%. Well, instead of coming in here and doing it manually, which could take forever, especially if I had thousands of records, I can use a query to help me out. And again, it's not going to be on all the books, it's just going to be on the books, let's say, whose part number begins with 10 or 14. So I have a query for that. I'm going to come over here to my retail price query. It's in the design view. And it's based upon the book project table. And I added the fields down below from the table, part number, book title, and book price. And then I created an additional one over here called the new book price. It's got nothing to do with the update query. It's just something I want to test out before I actually apply the update query to this select query here. Let me break it down here. First of all, the part number. It's like 10 or like 14. Now, if you recall in the Access Level 1 training video, when it comes to using wildcards, you don't have to type in the like or the quotes. Actually, Access will do that for you. So I'll go ahead and delete all this and explain it or do a quick review. Go ahead and type in 10, asterisk, space, or. That means that go ahead and pull in any part number that begins with 10, and the wildcard says it doesn't matter what comes after 10. Or, space, 14 asterisks, again, that begins with part number 14, and whatever comes after it doesn't matter. Then hit enter, then access quickly runs in and adds the like, the quotes, so it can actually do its job here. And apply the criteria correctly. I'm glad I have somebody that cleans up after me. Well, next over here, I like I said, I added a new book price field because I wanted to see what it looks like when I took the field book price, and it's in square brackets, and multiplied it by 1.05. The 1 is the original price, and the 0.05 is the increase by 5%. So if I just come up here and click on the View Data Sheet button here, I can get an idea. It's pulling all the part numbers in that begin with 10 or 14, so that looks good so far. And then over here, it's got the book price and what it would look like after I increased it. Now again, this has got nothing to do with the update query. It's just an extra field that I wanted to see what it looks like when I times it by 1.05. Okay. So I test it first before I actually do the update query because when I do it, it's permanent. So I'll go back to my design view. And after I tested it, the second thing I want to do is be able to create a backup of my book project table because, again, once I do this, it's permanent. So it's easier for me to create a backup in case if I screw up that I can always revert or fall back on that backup. To create a backup of my table here, just come over here in the navigation pane, right-click on the book project table, go down and copy it, then find a blank area down below, right-click, and go down to paste it. Make sure you get the structure and the data. We want both. And then as far as the name goes, a copy of the book project, that's fine. Click OK, and there it is. So if I go ahead and run the update query, and it comes to the book project table here that I have opened here, and it increases everything, and it's not what I expected, then that's OK. I can just go ahead and delete that, and then rename this to the book project table, uh, which is the original, or the backup, and I'm back to square one. I'm fine. So now back to my uh, select query here. How do I know it's a select query? Well. Once I'm in design view, I can come up and click on its related contextual design tab, and when I look at the query type, it's a select query. So I can run this and I'll be fine until I change it to an update query. When I do that, it comes down here and it adds the update to field. All I have to do is decide which one of these fields down below, not this one because that's not a field here that was pulled from the table, but which one of these three fields that was pulled from this table do I want to go ahead and do an update to? And what I do is I want to do it for the book price, so I'm going to come here and click in the Update To cell for the book price field. And I want to go ahead and say, go ahead and update, type in the open square brackets, and type in the name of the field that you want to update, which is book price. So it's going to look at the book price field and say, okay, well, what do you want to do to the field here? Well, I want to go ahead and multiply it by 1.05. So we already know this query is based upon the book project table. And it's got the book price field here. And when I want to update the book price field, I just go ahead, click on the Update button here. It adds the Update To field. So I can go ahead and take the field, define the field here, and take it and multiply it by 1.05. Now, if I'm a little bit jittery about what I'm going to see here, I could always click on the View Data button. It doesn't run the query. And what it shows me is it shows me that it's going to take these numbers here and update them, increase them by 5%. Let me go back to the Design View. And I'm ready to go. Just go ahead and click on the Fun Run button. Before I do, let's look at the book project table. I'm looking at the working from home using your computer. It's 1995 right now, right? Go back to the uh, query here, back to the design view. It's still set to update. Click on the Run button. It tells me I'm about to update 18 rows. Once you click Yes, you can't use the Undo command to reverse the changes. Are you sure? Click Yes. Go to my book project table. 
and there we go. Went from 1995 to 2095, it's updated. Fantastic. Then I can come back to my query, and let's say I want to save this query, because maybe I want to do further updates. Go back to the design view, remember it's the update query here. I'm going to come up in here and click on the office logo, and go down and click on save as, and I'm going to call this, and give it a new name, because this is the select query, but I want to save this as an update query, something separate. So I still have the, the default here, if I ever want to go back to it and not update, but just pull in the retail price. So I'm going to have a separate query here, it's going to be called my update query. QUPD, Q for query, and UPD for update. And then just go ahead and call it my click OK and then watch what happens. Because it was selected here, update query, and I saved it, it actually changed it from the little icon here that defines it as a select query to a little icon that's a update query. So yeah, it's a little pencil with an exclamation point. It's the same thing as you see up here. So when you're looking through queries and you see one of these, let me go ahead and close out of the query here, and I double click on it, it actually wants to run it and it's going to update. If I click yes, it's going to increase it by another 5%. So I want to make sure, I'm going to say no, that instead of double clicking on it running it, I right click and go to the design view and check it out before I start doing anything else. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.